Okay, hello again. We just talked about um, how to refute arguments, right? And, um, and the second way for refuting arguments is to show that the conclusion does not follow from the premises or the conclusion does not succeed logically from the premises. So how can you show that an argument is poorly reasoned? You can type your answers in the space provided. So remember in um, so remember in this um, in this method we focus on the relationship between the conclusion and the premises. Um, not like the first method. In the first method, we focus on the premises. But in the second method here, we focus on the relationship between the conclusion and the premises. Okay, so can you uh, just have some ideas uh, on how you can show an argument is poorly reasoned? All right, if you remember from the previous models, we can show that the premises of inclusion um, are not logically relevant. So to show that the conclusion does not follow from the premises, we can show that the conclusion and the premises are not logically relevant. They're not relevant to each other. Or we can show that the premises are not sufficient enough to support the conclusion. And we can show that it is very possible and it is very likely that the premises are true, but the conclusion is false. Okay. All right. Um, we have some arguments here. And how can you show these arguments are not convincing? We will examine one example in this video. And, um, and in class, we have, have more time for other examples. Okay, so what's wrong with this argument? On Monday, I drank 10 drum and colds. And the next morning, I woke up with a headache. On Wednesday, I drank a gin and colds. And the next morning, I woke up with a headache. On Friday, I drank nine bob morning coats, and the next morning I woke up with a headache. Obviously, to prevent further headaches, I must give up coke. So what's wrong with this argument? So the first step is to identify the conclusion and the premises, right? Um, what are the conclusions and premises in the argument? You have some time to answer. Okay, premise one premise two and premise three. And then a conclusion is obviously to prevent further headaches, I must give up coke. But to make the conclusion from the premises, that is one implied premise, right? One implied, can you guess what is it? So to move, so to make such, to make this conclusion from the premises here, there is one missing premise. Can you type your ideas? Can you type what is the missing premise? The missing premise is drinking Coke may cause headaches. And obviously to prevent for the headaches, I must give up Coke. Is it? Okay. So now we move to step two, evaluating the premises to see if we have good reason to accept or reject them. Remember, we have to evaluate each of the premises, right? And um, so what do you think? Do you think all the premises are true? All right, um, assuming that premises, a, premises one is true, it's true that on Monday I drank 10 drum and colds and the next morning I woke up with a headache and premise two is true, premise three is true, but premise four is quite doubtful, right? Doubtful because maybe are the factors like gene, like rum gene or bourbon um, may cause headaches, not just coke. Uh, 
um, when I find that we have good reasons to reject one of the premises, we have uh, we can point out one of the premises is doubtful. We can draw a final conclusion. In this case, because the premise four is doubtful, we have no good reason to believe the conclusion, and the whole argument is therefore bad or weak. Right. Okay. Okay. We will examine more arguments in class. All right, so in evaluating, so remember um, in the second method, we, we have to show that the conclusion does not follow from the premises, or we can show that the premises are not sufficient to support the conclusion, right? So to, uh, to answer the question, are the premises sufficient to support the conclusion? We have to, we often, we often asked, um, some more specific questions like, does the, argue, does the argument omit any crucial countervailing evidence? Or does the argument omit any important evidence that points to a contrary conclusion? So if the answer is yes, we need to cite the evidence that is not mentioned by the argument, but points to a different conclusion. And we call that countervailing evidence. Okay, now look at the example here. Many mo uh, uh, all mothers would stay at home with their young kids. It would promote closer family ties and studies show that June would, would stay at home moms do better in school, have higher self-esteem and are less likely to get involved with drugs or commit crimes. Um, so, do you think the argument here is bad or not convincing? So can you show how? Okay, uh, let's move on with the next, uh, with the first one. Identify conclusion and premises. Can you type your answer? Okay, premise one, uh, it would promote close of family ties. Studies show that family Children with stay-at-home moms do better in school, have higher self-esteem, and are less likely to get involved with drugs or commit crimes. So the conclusion is all mothers should stay at home with their young kids. Okay, and, um, and then in step two, we have to evaluate the premises to see whether we have good reason to accept or reject the premises. Remember, we have to evaluate each of the premises, right? So what do you think? Do you think premise one is true, premise two is true, or are they false or dubious? All right. So you may think premise one is not really true because there are many families where if mom stay, when mom stay at home with the kids, the spouse may feel more financially burdened as they are the main breadwinner and the relationship in the family may not go well. And the premise two needs further evidence because this may not be true for all cases. And um, if we found that the premises are doubtful, we can refuse the argument right away. But assuming that premise one is true, premise two is true as well. So the next step is to examine, is to examine um, the logical reasoning. We have to ask, is the reasoning logical enough? Okay, if we assume the premises are true, we have to ask, the next question, is the reasoning logical? Obviously, the premises and the conclusion are relevant. So we examine the sufficiency of the premises. We asked, is there any evidence that is not mentioned by the argument, but points to a different conclusion? Can you find some examples? All right. The argument may omit this important evidence. Some mothers under economic burden or um, who are the main financial contribution to the family have to work. So when we cite 
evidence that is not mentioned by the author, but points to a different conclusion, we brought up a binding countervailing evidence to that show that the argument is bad. Yes, and then um, when we provide counter countervailing evidence, we can draw a final conclusion. The argument is not convincing enough, and then we have no good reason to believe the conclusion. Okay, so what have you learned? Yeah, we just learned a second way for refuting arguments, right? So in this method, we looked at the relationship between the conclusion and the premises or the reasoning. So to refute an argument, we need to show that the conclusion does not follow from or succeed logically from the premises. We find cases where even if or even when the premises are true, that the conclusion is false. We can also point out that the premises and the conclusion are logically irrelevant. And finally, we can provide countervailing evidence to show that the premises are not sufficient enough to support the conclusion. So uh, to refute an argument, we can use one of the following ways. We can show a premise is dubious or false we can reduce to the observed, break the sentence or the claim down into smaller parts and show that these parts are forms. We can give counter examples, uh, provide an example that proves the conclusion is forms. We can show um, the argument is weak or invalid by providing cases where premises are true, but the conclusion is forms. We can show countervailing evidence uh, that is omitted by the area, or we can show that there are logical fallacies of relevance. Right. So we have so many different ways uh, for refusing arguments to show that an argument is bad or not convincing enough. So goodbye for now. I'll see you in class for more analysis and questions.